Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. We have a couple of tricklers, um, so we'll get started here in about two minutes at about exactly 8.50. Okay, good morning again. Um, my, oh, wow, we're awake now. Um, welcome to the 2012 State of Ohio Combined Charitable Campaign New Coordinator Training. Uh, my name is Tamira McCullough. I am on the public sector, um, will lead the public sector um, campaign team at United Way of Central Ohio. A couple of housekeeping tips before we get started. Um, I know we all know to turn off our cell phones or put them on silent so they're not going off um, throughout the training. Um, restrooms are um, straight out the door, down the hall to your left. Please feel free to get up and go as, as, you, as you need. Don't, uh, we're not going to torture you here today. The training is actually being taped. Um, it'll be available later for download on our state CCC website. So if you do have questions throughout the training, um, if you wouldn't mind repeating them or if they come to the, um, the speakers at the podium, we'll make sure that we repeat them so that those that aren't able to join us and have the advantage of looking at the tape later on, they'll know exactly what questions are being asked. At this time, um, you all should have your name tags. And on your name tags, there's a term called campaign liaisons. Campaign liaisons. This individual is going to be key to your success during the campaign. Um, and I want you um, to, to know who these individuals are. So at this point, I'm actually going to introduce them. Uh, there they are. Um, so our 2012 campaign liaisons, we have Yvonne Foster-Smith. So if you have Yvonne's name on your tag, then you'll definitely want to touch base with her at some point today. We have Frances Henderson. We have Warren Meisner. Mark Hurt. And Audrey White. And they are all at a point in their lives that we all can't wait to get to. They are retired public sector employees. <laughs> so they grace us with their, uh, with their presence at this time of the year to help out um, with the state campaign. Um, with that said, we have a group of our state um, steering committee members. The steering committee is, um, and we'll talk more about that here in just a second, but the steering committee is made up of um, your peers from various agencies throughout the state of Ohio. And so if I could get them to stand up, I won't call them all, but I know we have a few of them with us today. And they're responsible for making all of the decisions. Thank you. Did you stand up? Okay. Um, the State Steering Committee is actually responsible for making all of the decisions associated with the campaign um, as it relates to the Ohio Revised Code and so forth and so on. And again, we'll talk more about that. 
Um, before I go um, into the structure of the combined campaign, which is very important that you understand what bodies govern the campaign, how the campaign is structured, um, what bodies support the campaign, and the kind of support that you should expect to receive, um, I want you to know that this is an informal training. So at any time, if we're speaking of something and you have a question, just please feel free to raise your hand. We'd be more than happy to stop. We want to make sure, as a new coordinator, you are getting all of the information you need to run a successful campaign. Um, and in um, talking to some of our new coordinators, this is kind of the nuts and bolts. So we don't want you to walk away from this without the information you need to run a successful campaign and or going to our next training, which is all coordinator training, when our more tenured coordinators will be joining us with questions about this training. So make sure if there's something that's kind of puzzling you, don't hesitate to raise your hand and ask those questions. So let's start with maybe I should have passed the mic right there. Um, let's start with the um, the organizational chart. Um, the combined campaign um, is a time when both administration and union collaborate for a common cause. Last year, our campaign raised over 3.6 million dollars um, for a wide array of charitable organizations, and so this is definitely a collaboration between unions. Um, and our administrative um, entities. So we have the governor, um, we have the director of administrative services, and he actually um, sends a state campaign liaison to sit on the state steering committee. And that individual um, is the liaison, and so he or she will report back to the director in terms of the, the success or the processes or the progress of the campaign throughout the planning phase, which is actually all year long. The State Steering Committee meets all year long. Um, and then we have our state co-chairs. Our state co-chairs in this case, um, we have the Director of Administrative Services, and then we also have an organized labor co-chair. And they work closely together to plan the campaign. They lead the team in terms of making decisions for the campaign. I'll just look at this. Um, and then again, we have the State Steering Committee. The State Steering Committee has two arms. Well, actually, it has four arms. We have the Finance Subcommittee. The campaign is actually audited um, annually by an independent auditor. Um, and before we can present that audit to the Steering Committee, we have a Finance Subcommittee that actually reviews that audit. And it's a full-blown audit. That audit is actually done to make sure the dollars that are coming in via payroll deduction or um, however a donor chooses to give their gift to the campaign, that those dollars are actually going out and being distributed to the organizations per those donors' requests. And so we, we, the auditors just left, and we had a clean audit again. Um, and so they actually come in to make sure that um, we are doing um, what we're supposed to do as a campaign, as a campaign. And that's actually something that you may want to take back to some of the donors in, um, in your state agencies to let them know this campaign is audited and it's available for your leisurely reading. I'm always happy to make it available. Um, but it is, it's public, it's public knowledge. So if they want to look at it, they're more than welcome. Then we have our public relations subcommittee. Our public relations subcommittee handles the communications portion of the campaign. And so they're looking at the donor recognition items that we hand out based on the leadership level gifts. Um, they're making decisions. They have a communications plan they put in place because obviously for various um, agencies, there are various vehicles of communication that work better than others. And so the communications committee is looking at other agencies and talking to communications directors to make sure that um, we're getting the message out about the campaign, creating the posters and things like that. Then we have our policies and procedures subcommittee. This committee um, meets as needed, on an as needed basis. And so when the policies and procedures need to be reviewed, um, they'll take a look at it as needed. Um, and then we have our application review subcommittee. And I'm not gonna go in depth about the application review subcommittee because we're gonna talk about that um, a little bit later. But all of the organizations that are listed in the charity listing or the resource guide undergo an annual application review process, undergo an annual application review process. So that guide is never the same. It may look the same, it may appear to be the same, but it's never the same. 
Um, and so then I'm going to jump back over. We have our state co-chairs, our state steering committee, and those are the four arms of the state steering committee. And then we have the campaign coordinating organization. In our local case, or for our state campaign, United Way of Central Ohio is the campaign coordinating organization. Um, they provide fiscal services for the campaign, management of the campaign. We assist the state steering committee in terms of making decisions and adhering to the Ohio Revised Code. Um, but overall, A to Z, we're responsible for bringing those dollars in and making sure those dollars go out, making sure the audits are done um, seamlessly. Um, we work very closely with the state steering committee, again, to make sure that the campaign runs as smooth as possible. And then we have our campaign liaisons. I introduced them earlier. They come and they work with us once a year because they're retired and they get to have fun the rest of the time or go to Florida and all kind of fun stuff. But, um, and so they come and they work with us. And then if you look, you'll see we have our state agency coordinators, i.e. you. You are all considered state agency coordinators. Um, my advice to you, and Tammy's going to talk a little bit about campaign strategies, so I'm not going to um, still hurt thunder, but as an agency coordinator, um, it would behoove you, if you're in a large agency, if you haven't already done so, to start creating your campaign team. Start creating your campaign team, and those will be considered your co-coordinators and your key workers. This is not something you should try to do on your own, um, unless you're in an agency and you have seven or eight people, a smaller agency, and obviously you don't want to bring all those seven or eight people in to help with the campaign, but if you're in a larger agency and you have hundreds of people, this is not something you should plan to do on your own. This is not something you should plan to do on your own. And then we have the contributors. We have the contributors, i.e. donors. Um, and I'm going to back up here to the welcome because I totally forgot the staple in the campaign. And I, I didn't forget her, but she's standing outside, Janine Toole, with mo which most of you met this morning. Janine, can you step in, please? Sorry, she's going to get me later. Janine Toole is our campaign associate, so you've probably been communicating with her in terms of emails um, or getting communication. Um, Janine Toole is an integral part of the campaign, uh, and Janine, my, my sincerest apologies. You were standing outside, and so I kind of moved forward. Any questions about the structure of the campaign? Okay, so as a campaign coordinator, um, you will, you haven't yet, but you will receive your agency history and your campaign goal. Um, that information is still being processed, and so we, we don't have that information for you yet, but you will have it before our kickoff on September 5th. The Columbus kickoff is September 5th, Cleveland kickoff is September 6th, but your campaign liaison will be connecting with you to get you that information. This is information that should definitely be shared with the leadership in your agency because at the end of the campaign, everyone gets this information um, in an annual report or it's made, made, they're made aware of your, um, of your campaign goal and your campaign results. So you want to make sure that you pay careful attention to this information. Um, this is just kind of a draft, so when you get the spreadsheet, you'll know what you're looking at. But you have um, all the way back to 1992 in terms of your fundraising results. You'll have the number of employees, number of givers versus employees, which obviously calculates your participation rate. And you'll want to make sure, and we'll talk about it, you'll want to make sure as you're filling out your campaign report envelopes, and we'll talk more about in depth about that, that we have accurate full-time employee counts for your agency because this is what's going to help us determine your participation rate. And at the end of the campaign, this information is made public. And so you, we don't want you coming back to us saying, wait a minute, we don't have that many people. Our participation rate should have been higher. But we want you to keep us abreast throughout the campaign. You'll have your campaign go, dollars raised, the percent of change, whether it was up or down, your per capita, and then the average gift, the average gift. Okay, so you'll, when you get this information, you'll want to pay careful attention, and you'll want to share it with your campaign team, because they'll ask you for it anyway. If they don't, you still want to share it with them, so you, you won't have anyone saying, oh, well, we didn't know what our goal was. We didn't know that you set a goal for this particular division or what have you. So you want to make sure you share this with your campaign team. This is vital information, vital information. So you'll have the overall campaign goal, and then you'll have your individual agency goal, and the history, just as it's listed here. Any questions about that? Vital information, vital information. Okay. 
With that said, um, I'm going to introduce Mike Ryan. Mike Ryan is with Community Health Charities. Uh, question? Question? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. The goals are set by the State Steering Committee based on a percentage, based on a percentage increase from last year's fundraising results. And if you get your goal, and I, it pains me to say this, if you get your goal and, you, and there's been some huge massive wave of retirees or uh, I, I don't know, if there, and you're saying there's no way, you feel free to call our office and we can, we can help out with that. I mean, it's, it's a soft goal. It's something for you and your campaign team to reach for. Um, the goals are not, un, they're not unrealistic by any means. If I had it my way, they'd be higher. Um, they're not unrealistic, but if you get your goal and you're not comfortable with it, call our office and let us know. And we can definitely, um, because we only you know what's going on um, in the environment in your agency. We don't know. Um, so we need you to share that information with us. Any other questions about the goal or the history of giving? Great. So with that, I introduce Mike Ryan. Mike is with Community, um, Community Health Charities of Ohio, and he's actually going to explain to you what a well, you know, what, this just demonstrates one of the most important things about this campaign is you really need to have fun because you're making a tremendous difference in people's lives and, and you should have a little bit of fun along the way. My name is Mike Grant. I'm with Community Health Charities of Ohio. I'm delighted here today and I've got notes to keep me focused. For those of you who know me for more than a minute know I sometimes have a focus problem. Uh, Federation is an umbrella organization that contains at least 10 members and is tax exempt or a 501c3. In this campaign, whoops, how do I flip this, Tamara, to the next slide? Uh, I'm technolog technologically challenged. There we go. Thank you. There are 17 federations and more than 1,800 charities are represented, to, represented by those 17 federations. Our federations provide services in Ohio, around the nation, and around the world and can focus on a single issue like UNCF, Nightingale College Fund, which focuses on college scholarships, a topical issue such as the environment, you have Earthshare Ohio, America's Charities, <coughs> America's Charities, Animal Charities of America, easy for me to say three times straight, uh, which is animal and pets rights. You might also have groups that focus on community services and, uh, and actions such as your local United Way or community shares. What do we do? We exist to help you. In a large part, what federations are here to do is to make you successful as a campaign manager. We assure that our member charities meet the individual requirements to participate in the State of Ohio Combined Charitable Campaign. And I'll list those for you in just a minute. We can represent our membership when attending your campaign. Imagine having 1,800 charities sitting in your lobby for an agency fair. Not really practical, right? You can usually get about nine or ten of us show up representing a cross-section of the charities that are available through the Combined Charitable Campaign. And when we speak, we're supposed to speak on behalf of the entire campaign. So I won't get up and just talk about community health charities, although I'm likely to end talking about them. But I'll also talk about UNCF, America's Charities, Earthshare, United Way, Global Impact. Participation requirements. These requirements that I'm going to go through must be met every single year. The application process is an annual process for the member charities that participate with community health charities and all of our individual organizations. And we do provide some documentation to the campaign coordinating organization and the state steering committee for it to be reviewed. You must have an administrative cost, in our case overhead and fundraising combined to make up that administrative cost of 25% or less. Why? because we want the money going to programs. So 75 cents, the goal is 75 cents of every dollar that is raised in this campaign is providing direct programs and services to individuals in need. If an agency goes over 25%, and you know sometimes a flood happens, or other calamities that create an opportunity, or put a, 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 an agency in a situation where they're spending more on administrative costs, they must pre present a plan in writing on how those charges will come down in the following year. Must be incorporated and or authorized to do business in the state of Ohio. What does that mean? You gotta be registering with the state attorney general's office. Every single year, charities must register with the Ohio attorney general's office. Must maintain your tax exempt status. 
For most of us, that means con continuing to file our, our IRS Form 990, which shows that, we're not, that we are still doing our missions and remain tax exempt. And why is that important to you? Because every dollar that somebody gives is tax deductible. There's a benefit right there at the beginning. Charities must be directed by an active, whoops, moving ahead, your pledge card, uh, by an active board of trustees, sorry about that, uh, who have no material conflict of interest in most cases. All of our boards are, are serving because they've got big hearts and uh, their, their pockets aren't out to get any cash for me. If you are an agency that receives income of greater than $100,000, you must be audited uh, in accordance with the Financial Accounting Standards Board, FASB, for those of you who like acronyms. The charity must be in existence for at least two years. We want to see demonstrated performance over a period of time. You must have a stated policy of non-discrimination that applies to staffing, board, volunteer, and your clients. Provide funds and programs directed at one or more health and human service needs. And that wraps up the criteria. Pretty hefty stuff. Again, why are we here? We're here to help you. We're also here to help the State Steering Committee to, be, to assure that the charities annually meet the criteria as uh, provided in the uh, policies and procedures. We can provide you with speakers, educational literature, uh, we can speak about the campaign in, in general terms, provide you with giveaway items. If you haven't got a buddy shirt, see me, and the, unless they've given them all away while I've been standing in here the last uh, 10 minutes, uh, and staff tables at uh, uh, agency fairs. Um, and then really what we do for our member charities is uh, evaluate them for campaign participation. We do disperse the funds that are raised from, through the combined charitable campaign to our, uh, to our member charities. We also disperse undesignated funds. Those are campaigns that the campaign that are given to the campaign overall, in the same percentage as the charity receives in the campaign itself, and that is per the regulations for the combined charitable campaign. And finally, again, we're here to help you be successful. And I don't have to move anything else. Does anybody have any questions about that? I know I repeated some things three times. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Tamara is going to go over the uh, resource guide, but just so you know, this is from last year's resource guide, and this is what a, feder a federation is in the box here, and you'll see the listing of charities after that. You'll see for some groups like Ohio United Way, Community Shares, they're really mega federations, if you will. So for Ohio United Way, there's going to be United Ways listed. I think Cheryl, I heard Cheryl say 65. Am I correct? See, I did listen to what you were saying. 65 different United Ways. Community Shares has four different community shares that are geographically located. So as employees are looking for something to go back to their local community, that's one way to do that. Thank you. Oh, and Tamara McCall is back up. I can't believe he did that. Well, Bill, Bill, we'll have to edit that portion out about my heel. Thank you so much. Okay, so my, I know Mike asked, but are there any questions about what a federation is? I'm gonna kind of, as we go through the resource guide, I mean, you all should have last year's resource guide. Um, and again, like Mike said, he kind of explained what um, the federation provides in terms of their member agencies. And you'll notice, like he said, there's a box. I'll just kind of randomly turn to, ah, if you turn to page, uh, that one's up here. Turn to page 33. In your resource guide and never fret you'll always get a chance to read this in your leisurely reading page 33 that's a federation and if you look you'll see that each of uh, each of the other member agencies kind of fall under the federation for the reasons that Mike detailed for those reasons just kind of wanted to bring clarification and so if we turn the uh, the table of contents, obviously, those are, we have the message from the governor, um, it's just that, a table of contents, message from OCSEA, which kind of represents the collaboration between the governor's office and OCSEA and man management and the union, um, and that's actually pages two and three. Um, and it's important that you understand the structure of the resource guide because this will give you 
the tools or the resources that you'll need to educate donors on the campaign. There's so much information at the beginning of the resource guide. There's so much information and there, there's so many tools that you can use to help promote the campaign, help market the campaign, and really help educate donors. So again, we have the governor's message, and then we have the, and again, this is 2011, so you'll have updated information for this year. And then I like to drop down to frequently asked questions. These are questions that people are gonna ask you. They're gonna ask, and you have, you've been um, given additional information regarding the audit and the structure, but these are questions that you are bound to get as a coordinator, and so I strongly suggest um, that you read through that. Questions like, what is a federation? Uh, you may or may not get that question because most people just say they're just a bunch of charities in the guide. But if you do, then you have the information Mike gave you. Um, where can I find more information about the charities? What is the overall 2011 campaign goal? And I'll give you that information right now. It's $3.25 million. So you have that overall goal. Time frame. So again, FAQs. I'm not going to read through all those questions, but you would really want to take time to read through the first five to six pages of the guide because it's chock full of information that's going to help you run a more successful or run a successful campaign. And let's look at page seven of the guide. Those are local United Way federations. You'll notice that every organization, every organization has a five-digit code. That five-digit code, and we'll get to the pledge card, will coincide with how that donor designates his or her dollars to their charity of choice. Um, behind that five-digit code is the name of the organization. And then there's the EIN, their employee ID number. And then there's a 25-word description, a 25-word description. Every organization in this guide has a 25-word or less description associated with their mission. More importantly, Behind that 25-word description, there's a percentage. You will get this question. You will definitely get this question. There's a percentage. That percentage represents the organization's administrative and fundraising rates. Mike mentioned some of them are higher than others, um, but for the most part, they're under 25%. But you will definitely get that question as the, as the coordinator, as the leader for your agency. Any questions about the guy? Yes, ma'am. Yes, the question is, um, the, is the 2012 overall statewide CCC campaign goal 3.25 million? Yes, 3.25 million. And I'm sorry, and I should have repeated the earlier question. A young lady had a question, wanted to know who sets um, the Agency goals, those goals are set by the State Steering Committee and they're set based on um, a percentage of last year's funds raised. Any other questions about the resource guide? And there, um, if you, let's turn back to page 92. I, I also believe that this is great information for you to have, it's another tool. There's a breakdown of 2009, where in our case it will be 2010 and 2011. There's actually a breakdown of how the dollars were distributed. That's also great information for you to have as a coordinator. So if you actually don't flip through all 100 pages of the resource guide, and I know you will, uh, but if you actually don't, I would say read the first six pages, and then you definitely want to read the last six or I think it's like four or five, six pages, that is going to give you the information you need that will help you run a more successful campaign. That's information that you can give to donors that they may not already be aware of because donors usually go to the guide, they find their charity of choice, they fill out their pledge card, and they kind of leave it at that, but there's other information in here that may assist them with making that decision. Um, Mike made a, um, made a comment about um, undesignated dollars or special event dollars. And I just, just a show of hands, I'm just curious. How many of you are new state employees first? Okay, so not very many, okay. 
Um, how many of you were always under the impression that those special event dollars are split? And when I say special event, I'm talking Coney sales, hot dog sales, dunk the director, whatever you want to call it. Those special event dollars um, were split amongst all of the charities in the guide. Okay, none of you are going to admit it. That's okay. It's okay. Um, I'll bring clarification. Only the organizations, and Mike mentioned it, but I think it's very important that you understand this because this is a question you're going to get. Well, I'm not going to buy that Coney because I don't agree with where those dollars are going. Only the organizations, let me back up here. You, you actually, when you hold those special events, you have the option of telling where those dollars are going to go. Okay? So you, there's actually a special event pledge card. There's a special event pledge card. And if you're giving to, and I always, I'm very generic, ABC organization, XYZ organization, LMN organization, you'll want to put that posting up. You'll want to make sure that if someone is buying or participating in a Coney sale, participating in a bake sale, that they know where those special event dollars are going. That they know where those special event dollars are going. And we'll talk about that when we get to the special event pledge card. Okay, I just wanted to kind of segue, I wanted to give a caveat because Mike talked about the Federation and as we're talking about the resource guide, a lot of people are under the impression that those dollars are spread amongst them all or how does that, how do those dollars get spread? And so it's up to you and your team to figure out, but you have to let donors know when they're buying that Coney that those dollars are going to go to those organizations and it's important that you display that information. Okay, the question is, if we do not designate those special event dollars, um, how are those dollars distributed? Those dollars are distributed only to the organizations that receive designations. So for the most part, 90% of our special event funds come in on a special event pledge card and they're designated, I would say. I would say about 90%. For the most part, they're designated. And you have three options on the pledge card. But for those dollars that aren't designated and just come in as just maybe $100, those dollars are distributed to only to the organizations that receive designations. So there are 1,800 organizations in the guide. If only 500 receive designations, only those 500 organizations will receive a percentage or of the undesignated dollars. But with the state campaign, you have the... Um, the luxury of designating your special event dollars. That it really, that's a good thing because you can actually designate where you want those dollars to go. I'd say 90% of them are already designated, but for those that aren't designated, they're distributed to the organizations that receive designations. Any other questions? Okay, so this is um, the actual pledge card. So you have your resource guide. Um, this is the personalized pledge form, and so all of you will receive personalized pledge forms for the employees in your agency. All of you will receive personalized pledge forms for the employees in your agency. Yes. I was going to say that. I was going to say, do we have anybody here from DAS and or, and or RSC besides Brenda, Eric? Okay. Thank you. I was going to say that. I was going to get that. No, 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 you're fine. No, no, no. Thank you. Um, for those employees, um, for those coordinators from DAS and Rehabilitation Services Commission, you are going to pilot e-pledge this year. You are going to pilot e-pledge. So you will not receive personalized pledge cards for the employees in your agency. We are going to give you pledge cards, though. And you're going to have a separate training also. So kind of be on the lookout for that information. We're going to do a separate training for those um, coordinators and those campaign teams. But you will not get personalized pledge cards. You're, yeah, you're the, you're the pilot agency. Think of it as a good thing. Um, so these are the personalized pledge cards. And it comes with all the information um, that we need. And then there's a section here for acknowledgement purposes only. Um, if a donor wishes to be acknowledged um, by a charity, then they would fill out that portion of the pledge card. And then there are two options. We have payroll deduction, and we have one-time cash or check contribution. 
We talked about the five digit codes that are associated with the charities in the, in the resource guide. This is where those five digit codes will go. This is where those five digit codes will go. And we can designate up to six, organiz up to six organizations and it's a per pay period. Because down here after you do the total per pay period based on these numbers here, we're gonna come up with a total annual gift. Any, Brenda? Absolutely. So we don't get very many of those, but if a donor wants to do more than six, they can, and they'll just fill out two forms. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can do more than six on E plus, yeah. You'll be able to do more than six. I mean, you, yet really, I, really ideally, you can give to as many organizations as you want to. There's no limit. We don't get very many like donors that give to three or four, that fill out three or four pledge cards, but you can give to as many organizations as you like, or a donor can. So we have our five-digit code. And just FYI for you, um, about two years ago, we had four-digit codes, and then last year we went to five-digit codes. So you'll have those donors that may pull out their pledge card from five years ago and say, well, wait a minute, this is a four-digit code. It's ABC organization. Where's the five-digit code? I mean, what's, what's the new five-digit code? Or can I put in this four-digit code? Absolutely not. They need to go to the 2012 resource guide and find the five-digit code for ABC organization. Otherwise, we have to bring it all the way back full circle and we're calling, calling you to call the donor or we're calling the donor or it, it just, so we, as a coordinator, you're responsible for making sure those five digit codes are five digit codes and not four digit codes. You're also responsible for making sure that this per pay period total is correct. It's called auditing the pledge cards, um, audit the pledge cards, and that the total annual gift coincides with this total per pay period. That's part of your responsibility as the coordinator. Um, and for those organ organizations or agencies that are larger, if you'd like for myself or somebody from the campaign team to come out and go through this training, I'm just kind of going to put it out there for you now, um, and go through this training with your campaign team, please let us know. We are more than willing to do that. I don't want you to go back to your agency and take this training and just say, you know, I'm going to go with it and try to train my team. We are more than willing to come out and train your team using this tool. Not a problem at all. We can make it as long or we can abbreviate it for you. Whatever, whatever we can do to help you run a successful campaign and educate your campaign team um, on the campaign or how to run a successful campaign. So don't, don't take the onus on that your, yourself. So we have payroll deduction, which most people choose. Minimum is a dollar per charity. And then we have our one-time contributions, our one-time contributions. Attached is my check, and it says or cash, and we'll talk about that because we are not accepting, or your campaign liaisons will not accept any cash at all. So you may, as a coordinator, you may get someone that may attach a $20 bill to the pledge card. It is up to you as the coordinator to convert that $20 to a cashier's check, and we have a relationship with Fifth Third, which we'll talk about here later, um, where, you, where you're able to do that. Um, so I just want to make sure that that's very clear. If your campaign liaison comes out and you have any cash, whether it's special events cash, whether it's donor cash tied to a pledge card, they will not accept that envelope. They will not. It is up to you as the coordinator to go out and make sure that cash is converted to a bank check or check. Um, and so attached is my check or cash totaling. And again, the five-digit codes, the total gift, check number, check date. Um, thank you, please sign and date. We like to see all pledge cards signed. We want to see all of our pledge cards signed just because it's the donor acknowledging the gift. Um, but we absolutely require signatures for payroll deduction pledges. Absolutely require signatures for payroll deduction pledges. If someone's giving you a check, they've signed off on the check. So that's we still want a signature, but it's not as critical as a payroll deduction signature. Um, cash, they've given you cash, not as critical. We still want to see it, but we have to have a signature for payroll deduction um, pledges. Donor options all the way down in the bottom. 
I wish to donate anonymously and my name will not be released for recognition purposes. If someone feels in this bubble, around March of every year, we send reports out to all of the organizations that have received designations. Um, those organizations can or won't, either they will or they won't, receive donor information based on what's in those bubbles. If a donor wants to be acknowledged by the organization, their, their organization of choice, then they won't fill in that bubble. They'll remain, um, they'll release their information. That's when they'll fill out this information up here for acknowledgement purposes only. For acknowledgement purposes only. They fill that in, and if they fill in the bubble, then they'll remain anonymous. Any questions about that? Because you'll get questions and someone may say, well, how do I know that my money's going to my charity of choice? How do I know it's actually getting to my charity of choice? Well, if you really want to know that it's getting there, don't fill out the anonymous bubble and make sure you fill out the acknowledgement purposes only. Your charity will email you or they'll send you literature saying thank you for your gift through the State of Ohio Combined Charitable Campaign, but there are ways that donors can be acknowledged. And you, you're gonna, you'll get those questions throughout the campaign, and so you'll be able to pass on that information. The second bubble, um, we have what we call leadership um, level gifts or donor recognition program. If a donor does not wish to receive, and we'll talk more about what those items are and how that program works, if a donor wishes not to receive a donor recognition item, and you'll get those donors that won't want to receive those items. They'll say, no, I'm fine, I don't want a pat folio, I don't want the ink pen, then that donor um, will fill in that bubble. And Janine's gonna talk to you later about how you'll track, how you're gonna go through and track whether or not someone wants to receive an item, what level they gave at to receive an item, and so forth and so on. Thank you, Brenda. It's, yeah, tax award, yeah. Question was on payroll deductions, is that pre-tax or post-tax in its taxable income? Any other questions about the pledge card? Yes. I'm sorry. They're actually a budget, a line item um, in the budget for the campaign. A line item in the budget. What funds are used to purchase the gift items? They're a line item in the um, budget in terms of the campaign. It's a campaign expense. And you'll get that question also. That's a good question. And again, as the coordinator, you are responsible for auditing the pledge cards to make sure they're five-digit codes, not four-digit codes from five years ago, to make sure that these amounts match up. And I want you to make sure that you use your campaign liaisons. Use your campaign liaisons because they're, they're going to actually come out, sit down with you, go through your envelopes and so forth and so on. And so if you have questions, you can put those to the side. And when you make up your schedule um, to meet with your campaign liaison to pick up these pledges, you can go, you go through the envelope and they'll be able to answer any questions you have about the auditing process in terms of the pledge card. Any other questions about the pledge card? Okay. So again, this is the personalized pledge card. Did I have a question? No. Okay. Um, and then you also get um, what we call a blank or a new employee. It's actually a blank pledge form. For those that may, for RSC and DAS, you're not going to get personalized pledge forms, but we are going to give you a supply of blank forms because we do have those donors that aren't going to do e-pledge because they're used to getting a pledge card. We want to make sure we give them an opportunity to participate. We don't want to turn, you know, turn them away or turn them off uh, in terms of participating in the campaign. Um, but everyone else will also get a supply of these because you're going to have donors that, you know, that misplace, I don't want to say lose, misplace their personalized pledge form um, for whatever reason. They may want to give to more than one, they, they may want to complete more than one pledge form. This is the form they're going to use if they want to give to 12 charities or 18 charities instead of the six on the um, personalized pledge form. And it's the same premise. They would just have to then fill out the information that's not pre-populated or not personalized. Acknowledgement purposes only. The five-digit code. I think, oh, there we go. Same information. It's important that we have um, their employee ID and then more importantly that the state agency, and again, as the coordinator, you are going to be responsible for auditing these as well. 
the blank forms to make sure this information is here. It's important that we know what agency they're with, work location, we wanna make sure we have that information. And again, you're gonna make sure those are five digit codes and not four digit codes. So those are filled in. The total per pay period matches up just as you did on the personalized pledge card. And we have the total annual gift that equals the 20 times, the, you know, 20 times, I think this is 26 times to make the total annual gift. So again, the entire auditing process. But if at any point in time you're not comfortable with auditing um, the pledge cards, I used to be a teacher, so I have to, I have to get the mathematics right. It drives me insane. Um, if any time you're not comfortable, please turn to your campaign liaison. Please turn to your campaign liaison. They are a great resource, and they'll be there to help you out with this piece. Again, we want the signature there, the date, 